Pal World is one of the most unhinged games ever created. It is the unholy and, quite frankly, shameless spawn of what happens when you combine Pokemon creature catching mechanics with open world elements from games like Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring, and resource gathering and building mechanics and multiplayer from games like The Forest and Ark, and then you sprinkle a nice garnish of guns on top. And it makes the ultimate survival parody game ice cream sundae. And the thing is, it's a legitimately very fun game, even though it is still just in its alpha stage. Some of the Pokemon, I mean pals, are kind of familiar looking though, which means the devs seem to either not know what they're doing, or they know exactly what they're doing. The Pokemon team is apparently looking into the game to make sure nothing was plagiarized, but hey, that's besides the point. What I want to focus on in this video though, are the pals themselves. See, the aforementioned absolutely unhinged devs sometimes have a pretty messed up sense of humor, and this humor can also be seen all throughout the game in the forms and lore of the various pals that roam the world. So here are the 10 most unhinged, most messed up pals in Pal World as of the current version. And forewarning, if you are a kid or have kids around you right now, don't watch this video. This isn't Pokemon. Number 10, Lifmook the Grass Type, number 004 in the Pal Deck. Another original idea. The Lifmook is a short, furry, green squirrel thing that's smarter than you might initially expect. Their Pal Deck entry states that they are as intelligent as a five to seven year old human child, and that there have also been several accounts of Lifmooks learning to use weapons and killing their masters with them. I mean, I guess they may not like being forced from their home in the wild into a cramped little ball in order to serve the will of their human for the rest of their days. Like, who knew, am I right? You can even make their weapon of choice in-game, which is apparently a submachine gun, and let them use it and assist you in combat. Until they decide not to, that is. It's like a nice game of Russian roulette. Number 9, Fwack, the water type, pal deck number 006. This cute little blue ducky is a determined little speedster. According to its entry, it uses its own body water to make waves that it will body surf on when it's in a hurry to get somewhere. The only problem with that is that it goes so fast that it often ends its surfing escapades with a fatal collision, as in they surf so fast that they slam into a rock or wall and literally die. Often. Something tells me that catching a whack is actually a good thing, you know, to save its life from itself. You can even command them to body surf into softer targets like enemies, so you know, seems like a win-win to me. Number 8, the Dark Tide. Type Nox, pal deck number 021. The Nox is one of those pals that raises eyebrows because it looks so similar to an Eevee, you know, from that other game series you may have heard of. It is different enough though since it's light blue in color and wears a cape, which I think is pretty cool. Things get weird when you read its pal deck entry though. It says that if you find Nox hair in your bedding, you should leave it where it lays and leave immediately. Picking it up is a one-way ticket to a never-ending night. I don't know about you, but that kind of sounds like being made unalive to me. You might be wondering why they would do this though. Well, they're also known as the Duskin Aristocrats, so to me this means that they believe themselves to be nobility, and will just choose to have your bed, and if you refuse to surrender your bed, and try to take your bed back from them, they will then, you know, end your existence, which is kind of rude. Next up we have the neutral type Tokotoko, pal deck number 027. The Tokotoko is a little toucan looking bird that walks along the ground and lays eggs, you know, just like any old bird, but unlike any old bird, the Tokotoko eggs are not actually baby Tokotokos. They're grenades. Grenade eggs. Gren eggs. And they use them in self-defense, firing grenades at their enemies out of their rear ends. <laughs> and it gets even better. When they're all out of grenades, they themselves will become a grenade and explode, ending their own life in fiery combustion. Whether or not they do this on purpose or were just trying to squeeze out another grenade is unclear, but both of those are equally tragic and messed up. Number six, the ground type hung you, pal deck number 032. This pal is a flying, long-armed thing, and its arms are apparently extremely strong. So strong, in fact, that they can rip apart iron. Apparently some people used these pals and their arms to execute criminals by stringing them up in a public square for everyone to watch as the Hangyu would rip the skin off of their bones. The alternate version of the Hangyu, known as the Hangyu Christ, ice type, number 032B, was used to punish great sinners of towns by tearing their hair out of their heads, using their icy strong arms as a form of humiliation. Honestly, I don't know which Hangyu I would prefer for punishment. Number next, the neutral type Nightwing, pal deck number 038. The Nightwing is a huge, darkly colored, deadly bird of prey that makes for a nice tough mount relatively early on in the game. However, just like all the other pals on this list, they're pretty messed 
up. It is said that they will carry in young newborn pals of other species in order to raise them in their nest as a surrogate parent. Which, if it's not abduction, kind of sounds nice, except for the fact that after they raise them and fatten them up a bit, the Nightwing will then hunt the baby pal for food. I mean, talk about daddy issues, am I right? Which seems like a lot of trouble for a little snack, but you know, I digress. Number four, the electric type Dazi, pal deck number 062. The Dazi looks like a purple-skinned little dude that floats around in a cloud like a Lakitu from Super Mario. Similarly to the Nightwing, it will befriend lonely pals that it finds out in the wild by being kind to them. And I know what you're thinking, finally, an actual nice pal, but no, it gets worse. The moment that the lonely pal mistakes this kindness from the Dazi for actual companionship, the Dazi will then blast them with a thunderbolt, just for fun. And it smiles the whole time. What a prick. Number three, the dark type Moraith, pal deck number 066, also known as the messenger of death. It is said to relish the peculiar scent that living things give off when they're near death. So if a Moraith has taken a liking to you, it's safe to assume that that is the reason. And personally, I'm not sure if this is offensive or threatening. Like, is it a sign that I need to shower because it's been four weeks since I've touched water? Or is it a message that I smell like I'm about to die because it's about to cause me to die? Either way, it's kind of creeping me out, so moving on. Number two, the grass type Lilene, pal deck number 104. This pal is a very tall plant lady looking thing with a flowing dress and flowers in her hair, and they're known as the Lily Empress. Apparently, they're pretty docile and said to be full of love. They even watch over small pals who have lost their parents, like a one-person orphanage. However, for pals that it considers to be naughty, it will apparently unleash a full power solar blast move to discipline them. The thing is, that's a really powerful move, and especially on small baby pals, a hit from a full powered one would definitely be a one way ticket to the afterlife, meaning it straight up commits baby murder. The alternate version, the Lily Knocked number 104B, is even weirder because they will admonish any who are disrespectful with a painful slap. But according to the pal deck entry, some pals will actively seek out this punishment. They're into it. Although I guess this one is more so calling out the kind of messed up behavior of those pals that are into being slapped. Before we get to the most messed up pal in the entire game, I'd like to talk about one other species as an honorable mention, the ground type Dumud. Pal deck number 043 apparently has reflexes that are so slow when they're relaxed that if they were cut in half from head to tail, it wouldn't even realize it should be dead until the next morning. Honestly though, I kind of want to know its secret. The ability to relax like that sounds wonderful. Number one, the most unhinged pal of all, by far, is the neutral type Lovander. Pal deck number 69. Yeah. Nice. The Lovander is a giant pink anthropomorphic lizard that has fur shaped like a heart on its chest and a heart shape over its... Well, it's groin, there's really no other way to say that. According to its entry, this pal, called the Pal on the Prowl, apparently spends its nights always chasing someone around, seeking a night of love. At first, it only showed interest in other pals, but in recent years, even humans have become the target of its debauchery. Debauchery literally means sensual pleasures, typically in an immoral fashion, by the way, in case you were wondering. And in case the Love Ender's description, pal deck number, nice. nickname, design, and even walking animation weren't enough already, when they're defeated, they also drop suspicious juices, strains juices, memory wiping medicine, <clears throat> and cake. And you might be thinking, oh, that's cheeky. Cake means booty in real life, so maybe the Love Ender's got some booty. But no, it's even more explicit than that. You see, in Pal World, cake is necessary for breeding, which proves that the pal on the prowl really has only one thing on its mind. And that's the list. Let me know if you discovered anything new in this video, or if there were any messed up pals that I forgot about. And let me know in the comments below which pal is your favorite. Please consider leaving a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't already for much more gaming lore, including the very high possibility that I may or may not be working on a pal world lore video as we speak. The lore of the bosses, in fact, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching, and a huge thank you to my bandit crew who keep the channel alive. That's all I've got for this one, so be sure to follow me on my socials, watch out for love enders out there, and I'll see you next time. This is Bandit, signing out. Peace!